my name is Annie Claude and I'm an extension educator at University of Minnesota. I work with vineyards and I also work with a lot of other fruit and vegetable crops. So there's been a lot of talk in Minnesota and other parts of the country about trunk disease and grapevines and what to do about it. There's a lot of research that still needs to be done in this field, but one thing that we do know is that if a grapevine has trunk disease, one of the things that will happen is that trunk disease will start to kill off the cordons and the trunk tissue in the grapevine. For instance, you can see here on this vine, from about here all the way over here, there's not a whole lot of spurs growing on that vine, not nearly as many as we would want. So this part of the vine is not very productive, and that's something that trunk disease can cause. That can also be caused by winter injury that kills the woody tissue of the vine. So either way, it's an important practice to think about this and to think about if you have an unproductive cordon, it's okay to cut that tissue off and start replacing it with a new cordon using a young healthy shoot from the vine. And that'll help your vine be more productive and have higher yields in the future because once a cordon starts being unproductive like this and not having a lot of spurs, the best scenario is that it'll stay about the same. But a more likely scenario is that that cordon will continue to die and your yields on this vine will go down and down in future years. What we want to do is start transitioning this one out and replacing it with a new healthy shoot that's going to become the next cordon. So what I have to do now is I have to decide, all right, which shoot from the center of the vine do I want to choose to make that my new cordon? And so I have basically two choices here. I've got this one. This is a really, really thick shoot. And so sometimes uh, beginning growers might think, well, I'll choose this one because it looks really vigorous. This is actually probably a bull cane. And what a bull cane means is it's a cane that grows very quickly and it's very thick, but it mostly only grows uh, leaf tissue. It's not going to produce many actual clusters. So we don't want to choose that one. We have another option here, this shoot that's coming out basically right on top of that bull cane. This is a good, healthy looking shoot. It's got nice brown wood. Um, you wouldn't want to choose one that has light colored wood, such as this. So we like this shoot right here. So what I'm going to do is this year, I'm going to bring this shoot down and I'm going to tie it or secure it over the existing cordon. And I'm going to tie that there using these green horticultural ties. Some people prefer to use green plastic ties. So I'm going to go ahead and um, tie this new shoot to the existing cordon using these green plastic ties. Some people prefer to use green plastic ties when they're pruning and training vines. Some people prefer to use um, tapener tape, which is that thin, flexible green tape. Right now, I'm preferring to use this, even though it's hard to use with gloves, just because it's more sturdy and it's hard to use tapener tape in the winter with gloves on too. So I'll go ahead and put a couple more of these on. And we wanna get this tight to the other cordon. With this cord on here, this one's actually not very healthy at all. Um, so if we look here, this is uh, one, one basic point here where there's a lot of branches or spurs coming out of it. And that's indicating that the vine is not very healthy and so it's trying to push all of its energy right here to produce a lot of fruit in one spot. Because as you can see, as we go down the cordon, you have a couple shoots here but that's about it. Most of this cordon is dead. Whether that's due to trunk disease or winter injury or a combination, we don't know. But either way, it's gonna be better for us if we go ahead and cut off this cordon here and then replace it with one of these healthy shoots. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so this is the cordon that I just cut off. If we look at this, it looks like we're seeing a lot of discoloration and brown staining in that wood. 
that could be an indication that this vine has trunk disease, but it's also just not a very healthy cordon. So um, any disease that got in there could have also happened after this cordon died. Either way, we don't want it. So I'll take that off later. But now what I want to do is go ahead and choose one of these shoots here and that's going to be trained down and it'll become our new cordon. So this is just a little bonus piece of information while we're out here and we're talking about disease. You see on this vine and on some of the other vines that there are these mummies or dead clusters still hanging off the vine. We typically don't want to leave these on the vines over the winter because they can harbor disease and that can hang out till next year. So after I'm done training down this new cordon, I would go ahead and prune the rest of the vine like normal. If you'd like more information on pruning or on trunk diseases, we do have information on that on our website, which is enology.umn.edu. So even though sometimes it's hard to part with cordons that have been there a while, if they're not productive, it's really gonna be the best for the vineyard to get a new guy down there and uh, continue having good yields for years to come. One of the questions that I get a lot, not only from beginning growers, but from more experienced growers as well, is what is the best time during the winter to prune grapes? Is it okay to wait until April or May, or do I need to prune them in January and February? Um, one thing that this depends on is how big your vineyard is. So some of the large vineyards will be pruning the entire winter. Other vineyards say, I don't wanna be out in a foot and a half of snow like we are today, and they'll wait until April to prune. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to this, but there's research coming out in other parts of the country that show that when we're talking about trunk disease that if you prune earlier in the winter such as January or February that might be better to defend the grapes against trunk disease because if you're pruning several weeks before we have a spring thaw that might allow the grapes to actually harden up those pruning wounds so that any disease spores have a hard time entering that vine. But if you prune too early one of the potential risks of that is that you're pruning off too much wood and we don't know how much winter injury we're going to get or the other issue could be anytime you prune when it's really cold we're desiccating that wood and that might kill off a couple of the buds on the spurs so there's pros and cons and a lot of things to think about when choosing when to prune during the winter thanks for watching today and please visit our website again enology.umn.edu for more resources